Dude, what's up with the mouse? <laughs> Never mind, we're good. Hey, Green Machine friends and fans of fun, we are coming at you previously recorded from the Green Machine comic shops, and we've got this week's reviews, and let's just dive right in. So the first book is War of the Realms Venom. Now, what do we know about what's going on with Eddie Brock? He's got a son. Uh, memory he had memory issues because the symbiote lied to him and affected his memory. Uh, he's been separated from his symbiote, and... I, I don't know how to describe this without spoiling it a little, so there's a tiny little bit of a spoiler, but he sort of gets the Venom symbiote back, but it's sort of like a fantasy version, a very sort of War of the Realms, Lord of the Rings version of the symbiote, and it's really cool to see. And more importantly, what's cool to see play out is that <clears throat> the people that sort of do this to Eddie Brock don't gamble on the fact that you can't control Venom. That doesn't work out well for anyone ever. And so it was really fun to see play out. I had a really good time with this book, which is weird to say because it's not written by Cates. And if you know anything about the current Venom run, uh, well, granted, some people don't share my sentiment. Some people have been angry at him for it, but I have loved the current Venom run. Wow, there is so much weirdness going on in the mall today. Uh, so War of the Realms Venom had a great time with it. I would say go pick this up if you're a Venom fan. If you're into the War of the Realms, go pick this up. It's a good book. Uh, darn good read. What is going on? It sounds like a rusty bicycle. Uh, <clears throat> next is a book I totally hated. Couldn't stand it all. And um, look, I'm not going to hide it. Uh, Hulk Vereens. Hulk Vereens should be burnt and like buried out in the desert and shot out of a cannon into the sun. Dude. All at once. I hated this book. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I know a lot of artists and writers put their heart and soul into their work, and I generally don't critique this hard, but I hated it. I couldn't stand it. If you can't tell from the cover, uh, Hulk winds up with adamantium claws, and Wolverine winds up as the Hulk, and the way they did this, look, okay, I, I, I suspend my disbelief for comics a lot. Um, I do like the comic explanations. They get a little wild with it at times, yeah. right? It's it a little too tropey and a little too cheesy. It's just science. Just science did this. GG. Uh, what, what happens with the storyline sucks. Um, it wasn't fun. Uh, I, I kind of feel like they just went all over the place. It didn't make sense. They were throwing weird stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Uh, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. I, I guess if you're a Hulk Vereen fan and you really want this book, we've got it on our shelves. We'll sell it to you. However, um, was not the best experience. And definitely don't jump in on this book if you haven't been reading this. Now, granted, I had a fun time with a couple books back. I thought it was okay. So maybe this is just an off book. Maybe that's just it. But I gotta, I, I, I dislike this book most of any book I've read since we opened. That's hard to say. Um, I have, I have. That was terrible. Yeah, that was prejudicial, man. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to sell people books that I don't feel like they identify with it or that they'll have a good time with it. It's kind of why we warn people. Like, <clears throat> if you want... Look, look. If you want a trashy book, okay? You, you're the kind of person that likes trashy movies. You like watching movies with bad special effects, cheesy storylines. You like old sci-fi, which I, I kind of think old sci-fi is an acquired taste. Some yeah. of it is really, really fun in weird ways. So if you like that sort of thing, maybe this is your book. Maybe this is your jam. Yeah. Um, everyone else, skip it. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about... What's up, Les? Right, Haven't right, seen you in a while. We're filming. We're yeah. filming. Right, but it's right. good to see you. Uh, so, next, we're going to talk about a book that I actually love. This is uh, TMNT, City at War. We, we've covered a lot of what's been going on, but basically, uh, Splinter is now the head of the Foot Clan. He is, uh, I think, was it Orokusaki's daughter or granddaughter? I can't remember how it worked out. But he basically dethroned her, took control of the foot. So he's acting in the interest of the foot clan. Leonardo is leading the Hamato clan. There's the Mutanimals in play, which uh, 
are some of my one of my favorite characters that hermit crab hermit the hermit crab the, the hamster with the, the thing oh no, no yeah no this is the the hermit he's got the dumpster on his back that's what it is i yeah. and guns come out of it i love it i love that character um so they've got that they've got the purple dragons in play um baxter stockman is in play um who else is in play there's there's a couple other clans in play way more clans than i knew existed in the tmnt world but basically, they're all in play, and they're fighting for control of the Foot Clan. So Araku Saki's, they, she's calling herself Clan Araku, and they're trying to take control back of the Foot Clan from Splinter. So <clears throat> everyone's at play, everyone's at war, and it's fun to see. It feels to me like those old sort of TMNT um, comics where they had weird mutants in play. Like in this one, there's like a shark, a great white shark mutant that's like bipedal. And then there's like a giant mole and stuff like that. But it f was fun. It was like those old TMNT comics. It's a really good time. And keep in mind, I'm still not 100% sold on this art. As far as TMNT art goes, I've seen better. But it's not. It's it's still sort of. I'm on the fence about this artist. I'm. She. They're starting to win me over, but I'm still not sure. But we talked about this before. I grew up in the time of Eastman and Laird. And they would have a bunch of guest artists, which were all amazing at the time. And so I, <clears throat> I'm i a little spoiled when it comes to TMNT. But it's a good read. I had a really good time with this book. And I, it, City at War, <clears throat> it's part one. I think you should jump in if you're waiting to jump in on the TMNT stuff. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about Thanos. And this book should actually be titled Gamora. Because really, it's more about how Gamora came to be with Thanos. And what Thanos was doing before Gamora. And there's a lot that to unpack from this book. So Thanos had a space station. And before the Black Order was the Black Order. Um, they were space pirates, kind of. And his space station, he just kept building on it and building on it. till it was this giant monstrosity. Because he's a titan. What else is he going to do, right? With his time. He's going to build a crazy space station. Um, but... One of the things that I really liked is, like, the beginning of this. Gamora is talking to a ship's computer log. And the name of that ship is Laxus. Uh, if you don't know, Laxus is one of the, the faces of fate in... Uh, was it Greek mythos? Yeah. I think it's Greek. Um, <clears throat> so that, that was pretty cool. All in all, it was a pretty good read. It's nice to see the old Thanos back. And if you don't know, this Thanos right here in comic form always had an obsession with Mistress Death. And, in fact... I, if you don't know, if all you know is the movies, you would think that he, there's a political reason why he killed half the universe. When in the comics, he killed half the universe to impress Mistress Death. He he was love smitten. And uh, yeah, so that's, it's back to that old Thanos. And I like that Thanos. I miss that Thanos. And in fact, I, I don't know, when people start talking about the politics of Thanos, I in my head, I'm just turning it over and I'm going like, it's... Yeah. In the comic, it was way better because we had Adam Warlock's plan and it was a different guiding point. And I like selfish Thanos. So. And, and yellow helicopter Thanos. I want to see yellow helicopter Thanos. With special handcuffs <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Anyways, so this was a really good read. And frankly, if you're getting ready to watch Endgame, which some kid corrected me today and said that it's not Infinity War, it's Endgame. I'm like, well, it's kind of part two to Infinity War, dude. But, uh, okay, fair enough. It's Endgame. So if you're getting ready to watch Endgame, uh, this is a perfect book to warm up with. So come check it out. <laughs> Next is Jughead the Hunger versus Vampironica. And we need to discuss the imprint label. Yes. Things have changed. It yes. used to be called the Archie Madhouse series. <clears throat> and now it's called the Archie Horror series. And all of the titles are being switched to Archie Horror. And I happen to think there's a reason for it. It seems to me like they're merging the universes. Okay. And some of that happens in this book. So I don't want to spoil it, but it looks to me like this is the beginning of something really great. So, what do, what do we know about Vampironica? She was a vampire. She was a vampire. Uh, we thought she was very Buffy-like. Yep. She killed... Uh, we can say who she killed. <clears throat> yeah, we say who she killed. Dracula. She, she killed. Like we thought she killed Dracula. Yeah. Maybe things aren't as they seem in this book. Maybe she's not human anymore still. May, uh, maybe. 
So it's really fun. Just know it's fun. It's more of that Buffy-esque type stuff. And it's leading to a fight between her and Jughead the werewolf. And I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to see where they're going with this imprint. Because it's nice that they, it seems like they're merging the Archie Madhouse universes. And that's going to lead to a whole mess of crap. And I can't wait to see it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Jughead the Hunger versus Vampironica is probably a go-must-buy for this week. Um, next is a book that I'm... This saddens me. This saddens me a lot. Because there's two Rosenbergs on this title. There is Matthew Rosenberg. Is it Matthew? Matthew? Michael? Yeah. I think it's Matthew. Matt. It's Matthew. It's Matt, yeah. Matt Rosenberg. Uh, and, and another R. Rosenberg, which I happen to think they has got to be related, right? But anyway, so that's the cover art. And Rosenberg is one of my favorite Marvel writers, which is why I, it pains me to say this. This felt forced. It felt rushed. <coughs> it didn't feel on par with his other stuff. Um, basically, it's sort of like the X-Men are thrown into the War of the Realms thing, which would be fine, but it felt kind of forced as to why things were happening and what they were dealing with. Uh, on top of that, some of the writing was really lazy. Like, uh, two issues ago, uh, Scott Summers gets blinded. But, like, he loses yeah. an eye because, because of Hope Summers, right? <laughs> yeah. So he be Cyclops becomes legit Cyclops. He's got one eye. And uh, so they go and free the criminals that are being, like, held captive because they need all hands. And, you know, Cyclops is like, well, Hope, you kind of just blinded me in one eye. But, you know, let, let's just go deal with this right now. <laughs> I, I don't like that. That's, that's not good. But, I don't know, I kind of feel like he was rushed. It doesn't feel like normal Rosenberg. It feels like rushed Rosenberg. It's just kind of like telling him, hey, you got to get these characters out right Yeah, now. yeah. Like, they were like, yo, we got this event, and you're going to have to shift your timelines and do stuff for this event. And he was probably like, I, I guess. It's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm kind of iffy. I'm on the fence about this. I think of all the War of the Realms books, it pains me to say this, this is one of the weakest, maybe the weakest. And I hate saying that because I've really loved everything Rosenberg did. But uh, this is not the book to jump in on in War of the Realms. I would say if you're into War of the Realms, pick it up because you probably want to read the whole thing. Um, if you're uh, an Uncanny X-Men, pick it up. If you're an Uncanny X-Men fan, pick it up. Anyone else, skip this. Don't start War of the Realms with this book. Next is... My throat is going. Next, we're going to talk about a book called Fight Club 3, issue number 4. Now, Fight Club 3, we talked about it. We predicted this. Yep. So we said that um, somebody else was enslaving humans. They were enslaving humans. And that doesn't fit Tyler Durden's uh, mantra. He doesn't enslave people. He frees them. Whether he's freeing them from corporatism, whether he's freeing them from commercialism, whether he's freeing them from sins of the father. Even if he does it violently and at gunpoint, Tyler Durden is always about freeing people. That's sort of his thing. And somebody else is enslaving people. More importantly, somebody else is infecting people. And it's not Tyler Durden as far as he knows. Okay. So that leads him to a, a shaky alliance with Jack, a.k.a. Running Bull, a.k.a. Balthazar, a.k.a. Cornelius. He's changed his name like a thousand times between all of the comics, right? right. So, um, not the comics. The comics yeah, and the yeah, book yeah. and the movie. Yeah. Um, so, he's going to have an alliance, and they're going to team up. And more importantly, one thing we have to talk about is the way people are being infected is through uh, intercourse. Yeah. And then they're getting a tattoo of a teardrop. And the idea is, <coughs> if you infect a million people, they'll let you live. So, at one point, Tyler Durden is dangling somebody out a window, and he's like, how did your ugly self infect a million people? And he's like, you infect ten, and they infect ten, and they infect ten, and so on and so forth. It's Amway. It's, like, it's a multi-level marketing play. It's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> and so if you're going to doom the world, do it through a pyramid scheme because everybody hates those things except for people involved in pyramid schemes. Well, you know, it's a good way to support, you know, product that you already buy. Oh, yeah. God. If I had a dollar for literally everyone I have known in my life that has popped up after 10 years to try and sell me on Amway or some other multi-level marketing scam, I, I would literally have my own pyramid scheme. <laughs> so, God. Okay, so Fight Club, back to Fight Club 3. Fight Club 3 is a good book. Fight Club 2 was a good book for seven issues, and then the last four issues, three issues, fell off. The ending of Fight Club 2 sucked. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say. Paul and Nick is weird like that. He's a genius most of the time, and then some of the time not... He'll, he'll really miss. 
Um, however, Fight Club Theory, everything that has been coming in has been good. I've had a really good time with this book. I would say go check it out and come pick up Fight Club 2 so you can catch up. We've got that in the store too. Glasses have magically appeared on my face. It's the weirdest thing ever. All right, next book we're going to review is Dr. Stray. Oh, actually, we need to talk about this. One of our regulars brought me, uh, while well, well, we we're off camera, one of our regulars brought me the Iron Fist uh, mini keychain pop. I have been looking for him forever. So, a little backstory. Iron Fist is not my favorite comics character. I think he's far from my favorite comic comics character. In fact, I mostly don't care about him. Except for, I think it was the Immortal Iron Fist where he's running around with pistols. Yeah. I like that one. Um, but, okay. So, he's not my favorite character, but visually appealing, Iron Fist is amazing. Like, I, I sit there and look at, like, pops of Iron Fist or, like covers of Iron Fist comics and I love them because he just I, I don't know it's like he was an art major when he designed his costume which okay fair enough an art major probably designed his costume <laughs> but I, I don't know I love the Iron Fist costume it's like aesthetically pleasing so I'm super thankful for this so thank you um, okay so our next book that we're gonna go over is Doctor Strange and Strange has had a strange run ha 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 let's see he's so another sorcerer um, summoned a bunch of earth magic and pretty much displaced Galactus to prevent his world being from being eaten because Doctor Strange couldn't com explain how the earth fought off Galactus we, like we, we just did uh, so um, and if you don't know Galactus is a creature of science basically he was risen to he was birthed too soon and so he's always hungry so he devours planets and primarily Devours planets of science. He's a science fiction character, I guess you could say. Um, he's not a magic character, so where he was displaced was to a realm of magic. And it turns out that stuff doesn't agree with him. So he's trying to devour planets that are messing him up. And more importantly, I think he might destroy all of creation doing this. And Doctor Strange think, thinks the same thing. So Doctor Strange is trying to get him out of this realm. And what does Galactus go hand in hand with? Heralds. A herald? So, I don't know, like, maybe that happens here. You're going to have to read and find out. So, you should know there is a lot of Doctor Strange sort of backstory and back characters. One of his main bad guys, which, uh, uh, if you know, he, it, was, it was in the movie, but it wasn't the same as he is in the comics. So let's just put it that way. So, he's in play. <coughs> um, <clears throat> Doctor Strange's ex is in play. Uh, Doctor Strange's, uh, well, there's just a bunch of people from his history are in play in this book. And uh, it's pretty good. I had a good time with it. But I've liked a lot of the Doctor Strange stuff lately. He's been making his own uh, magical artifacts and weapons, and I like that. I like the angle they've taken with this character, and I'm having such a good time. Thanks, Mark Wade. Yay. Yay. And next, we're going to talk about a book called Ascender. Ascender is a, a weird book by image. Um, let me just preface this by saying I didn't like the art. Uh, part of the art felt really unfinished to me. It is like pencil drawings with watercolors over it and some of the pencil drawings got ink on them after and some of them didn't and it's really weird like her eyes here look kind of finished and yet her eyes here do not look finished at all so I don't know if you can see that or not from where you're at but I didn't like the art. On top of that the story is really weird so let's talk about it. So you've got people spanning out to the galaxy. What are they using? Probably spaceships. Yep, yep. High-tech stuff. Yeah. Technology. Do you know what beat them? What? Space vampires with dragon ships. Oh. Uh. Uh. So that's weird. <laughs> it's okay. So that happened. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if if you like a little vampire in your sci-fi, maybe this is your cup of tea. Uh, for me, it's a little weird. I didn't hate this book. I should say that. I didn't hate this book. I actually had a pretty good time. I just want to give it one more issue before I commit one way or another. I'm sort of on the fence. And the reason I'm probably on the fence is I think this book needs an inker. I, I honestly think that if, if somebody inks over a lot of what looks like pencil drawings, this book will look a, a thousand times better. Uh, so, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what angle they're going with it. I want to see more before I commit. <clears throat> Next is Black Widow. I need a sip of my my tea. I cheated on my boba tea place. 
because I wanted something without caffeine. And my usual boba tea place, full of caffeine. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I'll drink it before bed, and I won't sleep that night. <laughs> so I went to the other place, so don't tell them. Um, next is Black Widow. And I've really loved this Black Widow run, mostly because I like a lot of action like Punisher. And her book feels like another version of a Punisher book, which is great, because that's how that character is, the characters. She is brutal, she is an assassin, and she should be written as such. She shouldn't be written as somebody who necessarily plays by every rule, and that's why I like her. Um, however, I feel like I need to preface this by saying uh, some of the subject matter in this book is not that good. So what I'm saying is, like, the story's great, and I get what they were doing. She, she goes off to uh, Madripoor, uh, Wolverine's land, and she's basically hunting down some criminals that are doing the worst of things, and she's punishing them in the worst of ways, which is good. They've greenlit her to do this, and it's sort of a cool thing to do with the character. However, the subject matter is these criminals are filming a thing called, um, what is it, open play or some playtime thing, and, and it's basically like they're mutilating kids on camera for audiences on the dark web. And that is not a subject that I'm very comfortable with, and I don't think a lot of people would be. So while I think the action in this book is great, and it's nice to see this character um, doing so well, and being drawn so well, and written so well too, um, I'm, I'm not cool with that subject matter. And I don't know, like, if, if that sort of thing bothers you, this is not the book to jump in on. I think she's going to fight the big bad in probably the next one, it feels like, and then they'll move on to a new storyline. So maybe give it an issue or two before you jump in on Black Widow if that sort of thing bothers you. Next is a book you made me read. It's called Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And uh, do you want to come talk about Galaxy's Edge? Sure. Put me on the spot. Sure. <clears throat> I'm just going to stand off to the side over here. Okay. So if you haven't been keeping up uh, if you're not a disney fan you probably don't know about disneyland's new expansion that's the star wars land as everyone's been calling it it's actually called the galaxy's edge so this is supposed to be the most immersive disney experience that you've ever had in your entire life uh from the moment that you enter the park that area right there you're supposed to be involved in the story uh you shape the story uh your phone is a part of it there's parts of it where you can like geotag certain things and uh, you can play big games as you're just in the park, not even on a ride. They've got, uh, well, <laughs> a Millennium <clears throat> Falcon ride. They've got a Rebel Escape ride. They've got all kinds of things going on. There's a cantina where you can actually buy alcohol. It's supposed to be this huge event, and to go with the event, they actually have a good old comic book to go with it. So, so let, let me ask you, can yeah. you be these different things? Can you be a smuggler? So you can be a smuggler? Can, can you be a Jedi? You can be a Jedi. Can you be a Sith? I believe so. Can you be a Stormtrooper? I, I believe that's all part of it. So can it's can not you be a Bounty Hunter? It's not Stormtrooper. It's going to be the First, first order. order. Yeah. Can you be a Bounty or Hunter? Uh, yes. So uh, you can actually go to certain parts of the park, or excuse me, uh, that area. Uh, the way I've been reading it is uh, you can go ahead and actually... Uh, do small missions as you're going through the park, but failure to do said missions might cause a bounty to go on your head where someone else might be paid to come out and get you. So I would be a bounty hunter. Yeah, uh, I think I, I would want to take the bounty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, so this is supposed to be the story because inside there's already a fleshed out story, a world, and they've put it inside of the canon. And <coughs> this is it right here. So, Steve, I'm going to let you take over. Or a Sith. I would be a Sith. I wouldn't be a Jedi. <laughs> I'll tell you that. If I had force powers, I'd be a Sith. I'm sorry, there is no peace, only passion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so Galaxy's Edge. Uh, well, let's see. This is sort of a weird standard of flavor for, co for Star Wars comics. Um, Han Solo and Chewie are involved, and they're basically hired to smuggle a uh, Sarlacc, a Sarlacc to somebody. And they, they do flesh out some of the origin of Sarlaccs and what they do when they're younger that I didn't know about. Uh, did you know, uh, well, I, I don't want to spoil it, so I won't spoil it, but it does flesh out some of the uh, Sarlacc stuff, and they introduce uh, basically a crime boss who is an Ithorian, uh, uh, and I like Ithorians, I really love them. Yeah, that's one of the characters in the park. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so this is pretty much backstory for the Disney Star Wars stuff, which I'm going to want to be a part of because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but Yogi sort of knows that I'm not a big Disneyland fan. So I'm probably going to wait, like, I don't know, five years until the, the lines <laughs> die down and then go experience it. Uh, 
<clears throat> but we'll see. So this comic, um, it's pretty much your standard Star Wars flavor. But if you're super interested in the Disney stuff, come pick this up. You're going to want this backstory before you go to Galaxy's Edge. And that's not to say I, I didn't have a bad time with it. I could You could write Han and, and Chewie into just about anything and I'd be entertained, to be honest with you. So <clears throat> had a good time. Um, go check this out. Oh, and it looks like Akbar is on the cover too. But I don't think that's Akbar. Yeah. Well, There's a drop. Yeah. There's a drop. Yeah, he, he's not in the comic. I'm sorry. Ah. Yeah. Uh, ah. Yeah. Uh, Leia, you can pull yourself out of space, but you can't grab an act bar. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Next book that made me sigh painfully, not because it was a bad book, but because it hurt me a bit. Uh, Heroes in Crisis. So if you don't know, the Heroes in Crisis stuff is basically... There was a center for PTSD where all the heroes were visiting and some tragedy struck there. Some terrible tragedy struck there. Struck there. Nobody knows who did it. Um, <coughs> Harley thinks Booster Gold did it. Booster thinks Harley, Harley did it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Man, I keep coughing. Harley's got her buddy, um, Batgirl, running around with her. Booster's got his buddy. Who's that? I, I wonder. Blue Beetle. <laughs> Blue Beetle. Sorry. It's always Blue Beetle. My brain yeah. So Blue Beetle and Booster. So I, I have loved everything about the Heroes in Crisis thing um, event. It, it's, it's gone back and forth. It's been a hell. hell like a heck. Heck hell? Heck boy? Heck boy? We saw a meme this week of uh, where somebody had taken Hellboy and they censored it on the, uh, the, the movie banner thing. Yeah. And it says, heck boy. Yeah. Heck boy is my favorite hero now. Um, I need a hat that says Heck boy. I think it's gonna happen. And it's got to be like a blue knockoff Hellboy. It's gonna say Hell and then slide through it. Heck boy. Uh, so oh, okay, so it's been a wild ride, and this is somewhat of a wrap up. There's still one more book to go, and and so I don't know what's gonna happen, but they explain what happened in here. And it's a little painful. It hurt me, one. Two, the character they chose to have do this. Uh, I mean, it was painful. He's obviously dealing with trauma. I just say he. I spoiled a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So they are dealing with trauma, but <clears throat> it hurt me that this character did this. That's all I'm going to say. Um, it was a very, very painful end to a very, very deep and provocative story that I loved. Um, and, and I, I can't wait to see where they go with the ninth book. I'm, I'm hoping it gets fixed and I'm hoping how it gets fixed is not a tropey way, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, <clears throat> oh man, it, it hurt. Uh, let's just say that it hurt. Next is goddess mode. And I love everything about goddess mode. Can we say this? Uh, this is written by Zoe Quinn. The uh, art is, uh, Robbie Rodriguez. And the cover artist is Rico Renzi. Um, I didn't know what to expect with this. And they did a mix of, like, uh, Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash. It felt like um, <clears throat> uh, William Gibson's Neuromancer thrown in there. Uh, it was really weird. So, basically, the world has been uh, infected with sort of a technovirus that sort of puts people into comatose states. Meanwhile, people have nanomachines in their head, in their mind, so they can literally see the Internet as they move through life. Meanwhile, the main character finds out that there's a magic level of that internet, and she's got to go off and fight demons with other people who have been fighting demons. So that story sounds weird. For some reason, it works. It works really well, and uh, it's drawn beautifully. It's, it's got some of the most gorgeous art, and I'm happy to say that in this issue, the characters level up like a video game. Oh. And I loved it. This is how you should be writing some modern sci-fi stuff. This is good stuff. Uh, so Goddess Mode, issue number five. <clears throat> if you haven't jumped in yet, I would recommend you go get a couple other back issues. But don't worry, the trade's going to be coming soon. And if you've been following Goddess Mode, come pick this up. It's good. The next book we're going to review is called, Well, We Messed Up. It's not something we normally carry, but we're going to review it anyway. And that's Rolled and Told. Rolled and Told, as it turns out, is a D&D &D campaign... Um, along with classes, it's basically a role-playing game guide if you're trying to stage a game night. So this will give you, um, 
what's it called? A campaign? Yeah. yeah, campaign. I've never played D and I used to collect monster manuals, and I used to co collect the dice, and I've never no. We played one time, and my buddy, me and my buddy Ethan, got asked to leave because we weren't taking the game seriously. Um, <clears throat> whatever. Um, so we got asked to leave. So I've never really played a D and D game, which is terrible. I might need to hand him my nerd card. Uh, however, so this is a D and D campaign. It's got some some character suggestions, um, some other suggestions on setting up your your uh, game night. It's got a whole bunch of campaigns in one. Um, this is kind of cool. So if, if I played role-playing games, I, I, other than video games, I would totally be all about this. But we thought that maybe this was a comic and we ordered it. So if you like D&D and you like campaign stuff and you need some ideas for your game night, come pick this up, please. Rolled and told. Pretty good. Uh, not something I'm used to reviewing, but okay. Um, <clears throat> next, we're going to talk about Batman Detective Comics. And we need to talk about the fact that Batman Detective Comics has had a new banner. Yeah. And this banner, I hate to say it, like there's blue across the top, and it's very sleek. It feels like a throwback to the old Detective Comics style. I think it's been for a couple issues. Yeah. It's been for a couple like, issues. No, but I, I was sick, so I didn't get to review this. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, uh, it feels like a throwback to the old Detective Comics while still being modern. And I have to feel like this blue right here is referencing the Rebirth blue strips that were at the top. Which, I gotta tell you, when they took away those Rebirth strips, I wanted the comics less. It's weird, right? Like, it's weird, the psychology. For some reason, the Rebirth thing made me go, oh, I've gotta have that book. And then when they took it away, I was like, oh, mm, mm, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know why. Something, there was some kind of psychologic, psych, psychological marketing thing. But, so I think they're doing that with this because it looks like the same kind of blue, right? I just love it because I look at it and I can hear like the trumpets and people are going, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I, I do love it. I yeah. love the way it looks. Cool. So, okay, Detective Comics. So this, if you got Detective Comics 1000, you know that a character was in play and they covered it in the last one, 1001, but the character's name is Arkham Knight. Now, I think there has been an instance of Arkham Knight before, wasn't it? Jason Todd, right? Yeah. This is not the Jason. I don't think it is. I don't think. But uh, so these people are in play, and they seem very Templar and Crusader-like, and they reference it. So <coughs> he's in space right now. So yeah, if you're thinking Osreal, yeah. I don't think it's Osreal, but we don't know. We don't know. <coughs> it could be. Um, however... I don't think Osriel would ever turn on Bats. I don't think Asbats would ever turn on Batman. But you never know. So we'll have to wait and see. However, um, this issue doesn't quite center on Batman. It wraps up some stuff that happened because they were in the middle of a fight in the last issue. So that wraps up. But then it centers on Damien and Damien's sort of uh, his encounter with this same group and how it gets handled. And I love when Damien's in play because Damien is, is way more... He doesn't mess around. He's way more brutal. And I like how he handles things. I love how Damien handles things. So, uh, okay. Detective Comics 1002. If you're a Batman fan, jump in. If you're a DC fan, jump in. If you're a Marvel fan, you want to dip your toes in DC, this is still a good book to do it with. Um, it's only like one issue into Arkham Knight, so you're not missing too terribly much. And I had a pretty good time with it. Our last book of the week. Oh, I should say there was another book I wanted to review. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to really review Ironheart because I've been really liking Ironheart. And I've been digging that, that run. Um, but for some reason, we don't have that many for the shelf. Like, we got a couple more subs, and now we only have, like, two for the shelf. So we're not reviewing it this week. We're just going to throw them on the shelf. I'm sorry. So if you want Ironheart, you got to rush tomorrow to come get it. Um, <clears throat> next book, the last book. I need a drink. My throat's going. Dial H for Hero. And it says... Mr. Thunder or the Operator? So one of these is good and one of these is evil. That's funny because that's the name of my left fist. What, the Operator? No, Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to name my, my right fist the Operator now. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, basically the main character, uh, I think his name is Miguel. Pretty sure it's Miguel. Miguel has found the hero dial. The hero dial, you dial it, you can become a hero. It doesn't feel like any of these people have choice in the heroes they become, but they become parodies of uh, some really cool stuff. And in this issue, they're going to parody um, Full Metal Alchemist, oh. some manga. Okay. 
and Dragon Ball. Wow. So there are okay. very <laughs> manga-inspired characters in a total fight in this, and it's great. It's a really good showing. More importantly, I, I want to just get a red rotary dial phone and just walk around with it and pretend that I'm the... That's how I'm going to cosplay. I'm going to cosplay the hero dial. But, so the kids in the story have run away and they're sort of dealing with the hero dial. And I think their goal is to get it to Superman. Because they feel like it's a problem. And granted, the one of them likes being a hero, but he still feels like kind of like it's a problem. <clears throat> Whenever they dial the hero dial, everyone who has ever used it gets a four on their forehead. So they are alerted that it's in play. And in the first issue, like, even Harley is like, whoa, like, the hero dial is coming. Yeah. So that happens. Um, in this issue, however, um, there's a really good fight. And the main character, Miguel, says that he... Uh, has run away to Fresno before, and the girl goes, well, Fresno is only like 40 minutes away. So I think they're from the Bay. Bay Yay! Ooh. Bay Heroes represent! Finally! Yes! <laughs> DC gave us a Bay Hero. Yay. So I'm really happy about uh, Dial H for Hero. I hope they keep going with this character. I want to see more. And more importantly, Whenever you see these Wonder Comic strips on the top of DC Comics, it's a pretty safe assumption they're good books. I haven't read one yet that I don't like. It's Naomi, Wonder Twins, Hero, Dial H for Hero. There's one more. I can't remember. There's one more. But nonetheless, I haven't had a bad time with any of these Wonder Comics books, so you should go pick them up if you're a DC fan. If you're a Marvel fan and you want some light-hearted DC to dip your toes into, well, you can't go wrong with the Wonder Comics stuff. And I guess that's everything for this week. We need to do the drawing. Yeah. Did you want to tell them about what's going on with uh, the wars? The War of the Realms and how things are popping off with like Uncanny and Amazing. I mean, didn't we talk about the, those books here? In this review? Yeah, they're in this review. Yeah. So I think they're good. Okay. I think they're good right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I think we're good on that. Uh, what else? There was something else we should talk about. Oh, free comic book day. Oh, yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. May the, May the 4th, free comic book day. We're going to have a ton of comics. I think the way we're going to work it is you're going to come in and pick up two, maybe three books. I'm not. We haven't figured it out yet. We don't have an endless supply, and we're trying to get them to last throughout the day. But please come through and pick up some free comics, and we will have some merch, uh, including, I think, a Constantine pop where he's holding, yeah. like, fireballs and stuff. While supplies last, and I'm taking one of them, so it's already going to be down one, so you're going to have to rush here. It's going to be down two because we're taking the Constantine Pops. All right, guys. <coughs> oh, what else happened this week? We had a Swamp Thing trailer. Oh, yeah. yeah that was good. Uh, live it wasn't a trailer. It's a teaser. teaser. It's not live action. It's animated. I think it's animated. It looked like it was live action, didn't it? Yeah, it's not. It's, I don't think it's live action. I think it's animated. It just looks I really good. It's gonna be dope. I'm sure of it. I don't know. I can't wait. <laughs> um, 232 is the first winner. All right. That would be Adam Salvador Hernandez. Adam Salvador Hernandez. You want a poster? Um, who's next? <clears throat> Two. Oh. Wow. Ah, uh, Shale Homan. Cheryl. Sh Shale Homan. Cheryl. Cheryl Hayes, you've won a poster. 145. Okie dokie. That's going to bring us to Jonathan Gonzalez. Jonathan Gonzalez, you've won a poster, so come through and pick him up. Uh, and I guess that's everything for this week. That's all I can think of. Yeah. All right. Free comic book day, Swamp Thing poster drop, or Swamp Thing trailer dropped. What other trailers dropped? Anything? Uh, oh, oh uh, there's that new uh, Snyder. Oh, 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 there is a new Snyder Coppola book um, called, um, um, whoa, let me, what is it called? Uh, something, Batman. <laughs> I'm going to find it, I'm going to find uh, it. And also, if you guys are Ghostbusters and Transformers Oh, fans, oh, oh, oh. The Ghostbusters Transformer uh, preview is on the previews page. So there's like four or five pages. You can go check it out right now, previewsworld.com. So this is Snyder and uh, Snyder and Greg Capullo, and it's talking about Batman last night on Earth. And so I read an interview, and the interview said that Batman is walking around with a live Joker head in a jar, 
<laughs> which is messed up. And they said that it is the logical conclusion to their court of owls thing. I don't know how that's a logical conclusion to anything, but I can't wait to see how it plays out because, I mean, look, Snyder and Capola are really awesome together. So <clears throat> we'll wait and see how that goes. I'm going to go rest my throat, and that's all for this week. Mm -hmm.